Hello, and welcome back to yet another Star Wars review. And today, ladies and gentlemen, my friends, and whatever um, you want to be go, whoever want to be go by, um, here in today's video is officially the start. It is officially the start of me reviewing the Clone Wars. Now you're probably wondering, well, what about season seven? Was that was that not the start? Well, yeah, but I mean, I don't know. I feel like I kind of cheaped out on that sort of um, video just because, um, I don't know. It just feels really unnatural just for me to review, you know, Clone Wars out of order and all that sort of stuff. But then again, the whole series is out of order. So, um, yeah, so, um, so, yeah, it's like, it's, it's whatever for me. But anyways, to kick off this video here in today's video, um, this is actually kind of a little bit of a two-parter-ish sort of video. So today I'm actually going to review the 2003 Clone Wars micro series just because I think that series has a lot of interesting stuff to talk about. And I'll get into my reasons as to sort of why, but um, yeah. So... Um, I was about to get into those reasons as to right now. So basically, main reason is just because, you know, technically this series basically kind of is a start to the Clone Wars. I mean, this is the first Clone Wars cartoon, you know, and all that sort of stuff. Like, technically, this is the first we've seen of the Clone Wars and animation. And some snippets have been taken from the series and put into main Star Wars canon. Like, for example, of which, you know, characters like... Asaz Ventress, this is her first appearance in any form of Star Wars media. And now, and then when when she was put into the Clone Wars series, you know, now she's a very popular and staple character of the Star Wars saga and all that, you know, sort of stuff. And it's still unfortunate that we haven't seen her finale in animation. Great job, Disney. Um, <laughs> but anyways, with all that being said, though... I feel like it's really, and besides, um, I'm going to be really honest when I really say this, but this has got to be, the Clone Wars Micro Series has got to be one of my favorite non-canon Star Wars material out there. And what I mean by that is there's only like a few Star Wars projects outside of, you know, canon in which where, like, which I like more. Like, oh, for example, which um, I feel like that... Such um, video games like, you know, Knights of the Old Republic and Star Wars The Force Unleashed. I feel like some of the story elements of those um, video games should be, you know, in main Star Wars canon, you know, and all that sort of stuff. I really love, you know, those video games and whatnot sort of have you. I, I really do, you know, and all that sort of stuff. Character of Galen Merrick is really cool. I wish he was in Star Wars canon. Same thing goes for, you know, characters like Darth Revan. And, of course, um, we actually have a Knights of the Old Republic figure up here yeah up here somewhere so um yeah i don't have jedi knight revan and all that sort of stuff but the whole main point though is the same thing goes for the clone wars micro series i just wish some things from the clone wars micro series was still in canon like example of which um like you know anakin and asas ventress's first duel on yavin 4 um you know the battle on coruscant from the ground level you know from the ground level's perspective and all that, you know, sort of stuff, because we only saw it from the sky, you know, from the, you know, we only saw it from the sky perspective and all that sort of stuff. And, of course, you know, General Grievous, of course, you know, he was absolutely a badass in this series. And this was his first introduction. And, you know, and all that, you know, sort of stuff. I can really sort of just mention how the series, you know, also the animation style. I really love this style of animation. Like, I really, really do. You know, it's really fast-paced, and, you know, it just goes super crazy. You know, it's, you know, basically this whole series was inspired by by anime. And um, while I'm not much of an anime expert, and why I'm not really much of an anime fan, I'm not really an anime fan at all. I just love its art style and all that sort of stuff. Would that consider me a fan? I mean, I haven't seen such animes, you know, like at least the popular ones, like Cowboy Bebop. You know, or anything else like um, Attack on Titan or anything like that. 
And I don't know if it should count Avatar The Last Airbender. Actually, Avatar The Last Airbender is a great series too. Hey, maybe that's a future discussion on this channel. But going back to the Clone Wars micro series, you know, the animation's really great. You know, and all that sort of stuff. So the thing, though, I really feel like that this show is lacking, and this is something that it doesn't have over the 2008 series, is that there really isn't much really of a story. Because really what was kind of happening was that George Lucas wasn't really much involved in this show. And um, basically, you know, the whole uh, point of this whole series was, well, to fill in the gaps and, well, I mean, really not too much, you know. The one thing that this show doesn't really do is that it doesn't really further develop what the 2008 Clone Wars series does. And, um, and those reasons are developing Anakin's turn to the dark side why, you know, he feels towards the Jedi Council, you know, this also doesn't develop the clones, you know, and all that sort of stuff. Asaz Ventress isn't really much of a character, and all that, you know, sort of stuff, and, I mean, in terms of other things from the series, you know, that's just, that's just a lot of stuff that I can think of off the top of my head, you know, all that sort of stuff. And, you know, and that's like, that's just the one disadvantage of this show, um, you know, rather, you know, and all that sort of stuff, you know, there really isn't really much of a story. And one thing I also was going to mention is this show didn't really, really yet introduce such iconic characters such as Rex or Ahsoka. You know, Rex and Ahsoka, those two characters now are a main, like, they are a big, now they're like a big part of the Star Wars universe, you know. They're on the same level as Luke, Leia, Han, Anakin. Obi-Wan, you know, Mace Windu, all of these, you know, characters, they're on that same level now and whatnot sort of have you. And, and, you know, I mean, it's really is something that, that I, it's really unfortunate about the show, but that's really all it can do. And that wasn't, and besides, this show wasn't really meant to be, I guess, it wasn't really meant to, you know, I guess, show the full Clone Wars. I mean, we've seen, we've seen a lot of the Clone Wars, don't get me wrong, but just, it doesn't have that magic that the 2008 series have. But regardless, because of that, I still love it, you know, and hell, and hell, even now, you know, Lucasfilm, I guess, or no, Disney is really now actually noticing that this whole series, you know, holy shit, it's actually being appreciated now, and all that sort of stuff, and to sort of kind of briefly sort of talk about, or talk about how it's recently gone some... I guess sort of a renaissance in a way, such as, you know, such as the prequel ha as the prequels has. It's now on Disney Plus. I mean, here you look at that. There's uh there's uh Shakti and uh two Jedi and um clone troopers um behind her and all that, you know, sort of stuff. And hell, even in the Star Wars um the action figure line, the black series, they're even re -rele they're even uh, releasing um one of the art troopers from the series, they're also releasing a Clone Wars Mace Windu and a repainted General Grievous. So it kind of, so it's really sort of like, hey, it's having, you know, it's having a renaissance. It's being really more appreciated and there's being more merchandise being made out of that series. And if I were to talk about some figures, I would like to see more. It's just a little bit of a tangent, but I would really love to see, you know, such characters like Luminar Zanduli, um, Beerus Ophi, more ARC Troopers, you know, um, I don't know, just more unique characters from that series. It will just be really, really cool. But, um, yeah, so that pretty much wraps up all my thoughts, everything I have to say about the Clone Wars micro series, because um, I'm trying to give it some publicity, you know, I'm trying to tell people, hey, there's this really cool Clone Wars series out there that isn't really canon and this is something that I also is also something for me too is that in my personal Star Wars head canon this series this short long animated series some of its elements are canon to me like some of it is canon to me and uh, I know some stuff may not work but I don't care I don't really care which the same thing goes for you know um, hell Knights of the Republic you know one two and hell even you know the old Republic they're canon to me, you know, they're canon to me. And besides, you know, how even Knights of the Republic is getting recognition. So, um, yeah. So to end this video off, 
I thank you guys for enjoying this video, and tell me in the comments below, what is some Legends material, Legends material, some Star Wars Legends material out there, do you wish was still in canon, or what do you want to be still in canon? Personally for me, I, I want Knights of the Republic to be canon, and hopefully maybe with the remake, they make it canon, and besides it has been you know, getting a lot more figures too. Like, you know, there's a lot of giant, there's some Darth Revan figures out there. There's Nihilus is even a figure. So hopefully we can get more characters. So basically tomorrow, um, what's probably going to happen is I'm probably going to put out my review of the Clone Wars movie. And then from that point onwards, we'll see how it goes from there. So with that being said in mind, I think I'll enjoy. And we'll see you in the next one.